Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are listening to this video. I uh, have put together a new video on compressing your raw photos. And uh, if you've been with us for a little while, you'll know that I had a previous version out that covered CS6. This is going to cover using the new uh, Adobe Bridge CC 2018. Uh, and so it's just an update to that. If you already are or still using CS6, uh, please disregard this video. But other than that, if you have upgraded to CC 2018, you're going to want to watch this video because it's going to show you how to properly compress your, your photos and make them about a third of the size that they were before. We're going to go fairly quick through this, so if it goes too fast, please hit the pause button and uh, take notes. But uh, anyway, uh, let's just jump right into it. First, I wanted to just kind of give you guys an idea of what it's going to do for you. A normal photo shoot, and I've pulled up my SD card over here uh, that you'll see, and uh, a normal photo shoot is going to be about 536 megabytes. Um, and so that's what we've done here. This folder here is 536. I think it's about 38 photos. Um, if you have more photos, then that number is going to go up. If you have less photos, that number is going to go down. But you're, you're going to be in that 500 plus range. And so when you go to upload, it's going to be really slow, um, depending on your internet connection, and could take a substantial amount of time uploading and the whole point of doing what we're going to do today is to increase that upload speed as well as help our editors with their download speed to make it easier for them to get to your photos to start editing. Um, so how we're going to do that is, is we're going to get to Adobe Bridge um, and this is again the CC 2018 version. Uh, so I've gone to the SD card where my photos are now you may have a different kind of card. You may not use SD card. I don't know if you're using flash card or if you're using uh, another means, but uh, wherever you're getting your photos from. So most of us, that's an SD card. Anyway, you're going to go to your photos that you took for the day, and you're going to highlight all of them. Easiest way to highlight all of them is to click the first picture, then hold the shift key but down on your, on your keyboard, and select the last picture. This works the same whether you're using a Mac or if you're using a PC. Um, that same feature works both ways. So now it tells you that I have 38 items selected uh, right here. So I know I've got all of them. I'm going to simply right click and hit open in camera raw. That's going to load all the images into camera raw. Uh, you'll notice if you used CS6 that CC2018 actually has a gray background versus a white background so it looks completely different um, and it does actually kind of change some of the, the look of the photos too from what you were used to if you're used to a white background but um, anyway uh, it loads them into what we call a film strip over here which is similar to C CS6 but now they call it a film strip instead of something else so up here in the upper and left hand corner it says film strip uh, what we're going to want to do is again highlight all the photos Again, the easiest way to do that is get your first picture selected, scroll all the way down to the bottom, hit the shift button, and select the last one. It, it now has 38 selected. You know that you have 38 selected because down here in the bottom on the right here where I'm moving my mouse around, it tells me I have 38 of 38 selected. So I know I've got them all selected. Um, you also can use this little menu option right next to film strip. Um, when you click there you can hit select all and that will do the same thing but we have them all selected which is what we want to do and now we want to save them so down here in the bottom left hand corner of bridge there's a button that says save images you're going to hit that button there that's going to bring up a dialog box called save options um, up here there's a preset option if you are applying a preset please don't do that we don't need your preset to your photos. Um, it actually makes it one extra step for my editors because they have to um, change all your photos to as shot. And anyway, don't don't do any preset. Just leave this uh, 
you don't want a saved option. Just leave it as whatever the default is here, which in my situation is just custom. Uh, just leave it there. And then the next thing that you want to do is save it to a new location because we're working off the SD card and we want to save it to our computer. So we're going to hit select folder here. Uh, we're going to go to wherever you save your normal photo shoots or wherever you want to save them to where you know what they are. And you're going to say new folder. Um, remember that you're saving these into a folder called the street name of whatever you're working on. Uh, and so uh, for today's purposes, we're just going to use um, 8675309 California. Um, and that way we just know, again, that's going to be whatever street name you've got. So once you've done that, you hit select. Notice it's going to save now to that button right there. And then under file naming, you don't need to change the file naming. You can leave the files as whatever they came off of your camera with. But if you like to rename them for whatever purposes, go ahead. I don't care. Um, but what's important here is under file extension. Uh, I think it defaults to JPEG. So the first time you pull it up, it's going to default to JPEG, which notice that moved all of these options around to per to be exactly for JPEG, you're going to want to change that to DNG. And we want to use the capital DNG, not the lowercase DNG. So make sure you're using the capital dot DNG. And then the format here will automatically default to, form, to digital negative. It will automatically default to compatible 7.1 or later. Um, it will default to the medium size. If it didn't default to that, just make sure those settings are just like that. Then we've got two boxes here that will not be checked the first time you do it. Um, and so you want to make sure that they get checked. We want to embed fast load data. That just makes things open a little bit quicker. And then here's the most important button that you make sure that you check. And that is use lossy compression. If you do not select that use lossy compression button right there, your photos are going to save the same size as what they were on your camera, which is going to defeat the whole purpose of what we're doing here. So make sure that you check box use lossy compression. Once you do that, you just simply hit the save button up here in the top right hand corner of this dialog box. And then down here in the bottom down here by save images, it tells you where you are at in the process of saving. Um, so we have 38 photos. We're already down to 25, 24. It's just going to keep clocking down here until it's all the way done. And then you know that the files have actually been compressed. Uh, and so we'll just count this down here real quick. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom, done. So just that quick, guys. Um, it may be a little bit slower if your PC is not real fast. Uh, I've got a pretty hyped up. Mac that I, I use, so mine might be a little quicker than yours, but in all reality, it goes fairly quick. So, uh, to give you now an example of how much compression we got out of it, I'm going to go back to the folder here. And so, the one that I just created here was California, and uh, we're going to right click that, and I'm just going to hit Get Info. And you can see here, real quick, on a side by side comparison, the original folder was 536 megabytes. We've now compressed all those files down to 167 megabytes. Guys, that's huge because that's going to be so much faster for you on upload time. Um, you know, this is a third of what this is here. Actually, it's even a little bit more than that. So it's really going to save your time on the upload. Next thing you're going to do is then go ahead and zip file, compress it. So you're going to right click and make it into a zip file. Um, shouldn't take real long because that's not really a big file anymore. And so it should go fairly quick. So now we've created the zip file. The zip file is a little bit smaller. You can see a normal zip compression um, with pictures only compresses about two or three percent. It doesn't really change a whole lot. So that's why it only took it down to 163 megabytes over 167. 
this is the file that you would upload using Dropbox. If you are not familiar with uploading to our Dropbox, please get with me or IKEA or the help desk and they will assist you with doing that. Uh, but this is just a quick way for you to get your uploads done. You can see this has made it so much smaller so our upload time is going to be decreased um, substantially. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, again, get in touch with the help desk or me and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you with that and happy photo taking.